Hello, dear students, and welcome back. This is the last English lesson for the fourth grade of high school students. My name is Miranda, and I will be your virtual teacher today. The title of today's lesson is The World is Your Oyster, and it has a special message for you. In today's lesson, you will distinguish the modern use of the expression the world is your oyster from its use and meaning in the past. You will demonstrate your understanding of the listening text about a young person and the dilemmas she faced with at the end of her high school. And in the end, you will write an argumentative essay on success and happiness as perceived by society today. For this lesson, you will need a notebook, something to write with, and a device with internet access. Feel free to pause the video whenever you need to write down something or whenever you need to check something. The original version of the expression was the world's mine oyster. It was invented by Shakespeare and it was used in one of his plays. Do you know which one? What did the expression mean then and what does it mean today? Let's watch the video to find out. Type the link in the internet browser and watch the film. It's an interesting video and I'm sure that you will like it. When you finish watching the video, come back and we'll do a comprehension check. Pause the video and see you a little bit later. Let's do the comprehension check. What is the name of Shakespeare's only comedy that was set entirely in England? The Merry Wives of Windsor, The World's Mine Oyster, or Real Housewives? The correct answer is The Merry Wives of Windsor. It is also a comedy in which this expression first appeared. It was first published in 1602, written sometime between 1597 and 1601. It is a comedy about world conquerors, American housewives, or ordinary people in England. It's about ordinary people in England although the narrator compares it to the American TV show Real Housewives. And it's considered to be Shakespeare's most realistic portrayal of the daily lives of ordinary people. Falstaff tries to make the ladies to keep a secret from their husbands, to run away from their husbands or to go back to them. Falstaff tries to trick the ladies into giving him money behind their husband's backs. When you do something behind someone's back, you keep it secret from him or her. What is the name of the Shakespeare's character who says, Why, then the world's mine oyster, which I with sword will open. Falstaff? Pistol or Sir Walter Raleigh? Shakespeare's character Pistol becomes angry because Falstaff won't give him money. Falstaff says, I will not lend thee a penny. In Shakespeare's time, this phrase was used as a greeting, a threat, or a pearl of wisdom. It was used as a threat. Pistol threatens to get his sword and open up Falstaff's money bag like he's opening an oyster with a knife. The modern version of the phrase the world's mine oyster is the world is an oyster, the world is one's oyster, or the world is full of oysters. The world is one's oyster. Today the phrase, 
The world is your oyster does not mean you are young and healthy. You have no commitments. You can do anything you want to do and go anywhere you want to go. The world is full of potential and all it takes for you to find your fortune is hard work and persistence. You need violence to achieve your ambition in life. The correct answer is C, because today it has a more positive meaning than in Shakespeare's time. Who is Chris Gardiner? A businessman, a journalist or a film director? The correct answer is A, because he is an American entrepreneur who struggled with homelessness while raising his toddler son as a single parent. He became a stockbroker and eventually made a fortune. What is the name of his autobiography? From Homelessness to Happiness, The Pursuit of Happiness, or The Pursuit of Happiness but with the wrong spelling? The correct answer is C. In the original title, the word Happiness is intentionally misspelled with a Y instead of an I in order to represent you. His autobiography was made into a film of the same name starring Will Smith. And to sum up, in Shakespeare's time, this expression meant gaining wealth by force. To date means gaining knowledge, learning new skills, traveling and having wonderful opportunities to make your dreams come true through hard work and perseverance. Chris Gardiner said, the world is your oyster. It's up to you to find the pearls. We have explored the meaning and use of the world's your oyster expression. Let's discover some other popular phrases and idioms containing world. Let's listen to Tracy's story. When I was in the final year of my high school education, our English teacher wanted to give us a pearl of wisdom by telling us that the world is our oyster. To be honest, I didn't quite understand what an oyster had got to do with the brave new world of adulthood that I was supposed to dive into after finishing my secondary education. As a matter of fact, I've never really liked oysters because they must be pried apart and this can often be very difficult to do. At the time, I was in a world of my own and didn't pay much attention to what was happening around me. I dreamt of setting the world on fire as an artist. The truth is that I was pretty much confused and didn't know what to do after school. I got a great report card and go to any school of my choice. I wanted to study art, but my parents didn't like the idea because they wanted me to study something that will help me get a decent job. Since the art school wasn't in the city where I lived, it meant moving away from my parents. On the one hand, I wanted to leave my parents, even though I think the world of them, but I wanted to be independent and finally free because they were too strict, protecting me from the world, the flesh, and the devil as I grew up. But on the other hand, I was afraid to replace the comfort of my family home and mom's kitchen with the insecurity of rented apartments and food in the student cafeteria. Since I couldn't have the best of both worlds, I opted for a more convenient choice. I decided to stay at home and study law, something I never really liked, but I thought that the choice of your profession was not something you really need to think deeply about before you decide upon it. Now I know that it is important to decide carefully about your future profession because the right choice makes a world of difference. Instead of having the world at my feet, I chose to watch the world go by. I wasn't happy and I kept complaining about my life and I would use any opportunity to feel sorry for myself, which made me really hard to be around. As they say, laugh and the world laughs with you. Weep and you weep alone. I left the course after two years because with the best will in the world, I couldn't imagine myself practicing law for the rest of my life. I decided to pursue my dream and apply it again to art school. I was on top of the world when I got a full scholarship to the college I really wanted to attend. I had to move to another town and in comparison with this new town, 
my hometown was the armpit of the world. After finishing at the top of my class in college, I got a great job in an art gallery. I had the world by the tail with a downhill drag. Three years later, I met my husband, Pete. He was out of this world. I immediately fell in love with him, and we got married a year later. He was a lawyer, yet we weren't worlds apart. In 2006, I decided to open my own gallery, and I borrowed $50,000 to do it. Unfortunately, the bottom fell out of my world when the Great Recession happened. It was the most severe financial crisis since the Great Depression, and it wrecked havoc in financial markets around the world. The gallery wasn't doing well, and I had a loan to pay back to the bank. It was a difficult period. I struggled a lot. I felt like I was carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders. Fortunately, my gallery managed to survive with my husband's support. He did me a world of good. My gallery is very successful today, and I feel again like I have the world on a string. Do I have any advice? I do. When you have to choose either your future career or your husband or wife, choose with your heart. Love is important because it makes the world go round. And as for your future career, you should definitely follow your dreams, even if it means going to the ends of the world. And to look back to the oyster from the beginning of the story, it's true. It can be difficult to open, especially as the size of the oyster increases. But as the size of the oyster increases, so does the chance that any pearl contained therein will be larger. In any given oyster, there is a chance, but no guarantee, that a pearl lays within. The same is with life. Every oyster one picks up may hold a pearl, but most don't. Finding a pearl requires either opening a lot of oysters or having good luck. Either will work. If you don't take risks opening the oyster, you will never know whether there is a pearl inside or not. And let's do comprehension check together. For each statement, select true or false. When Tracy finished high school, she knew what subject interested her. Is it true or false? It's true because she was interested in art. She dreamt of setting the world on fire as an artist. She looked forward to being an adult. True or false? It's false because she was afraid of diving into the brave new world of adulthood, as she said. Tracy's parents gave in to all her demands. It's false because they were strict, protecting her from the world, the flesh and the devil as she grew up. She decided to study law because she wanted to step out of her comfort zone and challenge herself. That's false because on the contrary, she decided to study law because she didn't want to step out of her comfort zone and challenge herself. Her friends kept her company when she was unhappy with the choice of her study. It's false because she kept complaining about her life and feeling sorry for herself, which made her very hard to be around. Her hometown was an unappealing place in comparison with the new town. True, it was the armpit of the world, as she said. Tracy and her husband had nothing in common. False, because they weren't worlds apart, although he was a lawyer. She borrowed $50,000 to, to pay back her student loan. False, she borrowed that money to open her art gallery. 
Tracy's advice is that when you have to make important decisions in life, listen to your heart and don't be afraid of taking risks. That's true. She says if you don't take risks opening the oyster, you will never know whether there is a pearl inside it or not. There were a lot of idioms in Tracy's story. Did you guess their meanings? Let's see. Here you can see two links with match-up exercises. Type them in the internet browser and do the exercises. Pause the video and come back a little bit later. We'll check the exercises together. The world the flesh and the devil means all forms of temptation to sin. The bottom falls or drops out of one's world means that something bad happens that changes your life and makes you very unhappy. If you set the world on fire or a light, you do wonderful or exciting things that cause a great or remarkable sensation in the world. If something makes the world go round, it is extremely important so that many ordinary events could not happen without it. If they are worlds apart, they are very different. If you do someone a world of good, you make him healthier and happier. If you have the world by the tail, you are very successful, contented and happy in life. If you carry the weight of the world on your shoulders, you are struggling with an immense or, a, or particularly worrisome burden or responsibility. Not with the best will in the world means that no matter how much one tries or wants to, he'll never do it. If you are out of this world, you are incredibly wonderful and amazing. If you have the whole world at your feet, you have become extremely successful, popular and admired. If you are in a world of your own, you think about something else and you don't pay much attention to what's happening around you. If you watch the world go by, you do nothing much. If you think the world of someone, it means that you respect and admire him or her. If you have the best of both worlds, you have experienced the positive aspects of two situations. If it makes a world of difference, it does a lot of good things. If a place is the armpit of the world, it is a very dirty, foul or extremely unappealing place. If you are on top of the world, you are extremely happy about something. And now you will type this link in the internet browser and take the quiz with idioms. When you finish the quiz, come back and we'll check it together. When something bad happens that changes your life and makes you very unhappy, the bottom falls out of your world, it's not the end of the world, make the world go around. The correct answer is the bottom falls out of your world. If you respect and admire someone, you make a world of difference. You think the world of him. You do him the world of good. You think the world of him. You are not aware of what's happening around you. You have the best of both worlds. You are in a world of your own. 
You are on top of the world. You are in a world of your own. If you do not do anything much, you are out of this world. You watch the world go by or you make the world go round. You watch the world go by. If you are very successful, contented and happy in life. You are a world away. You set the world on fire. You have the world by the tail. You definitely have the world by the tail. She works in the city and lives in the country. So she gets the best of both worlds, a world of difference, worlds apart. She gets the best of both worlds. People are not good at imagining themselves in somebody else's shoes with the armpit of the world, with the best will in the world, with a brave new world. Of course, with the best will in the world. If you refer to something new, especially to suggest that there is some doubt that it can be good or successful, it's a brave new world, it's a small world, it's not the end of the world. It's a brave new world. When people do wonderful or exciting things that cause a great or remarkable sensation in the world, they have the world on a string, they set the world on fire, they are on top of the world. They set the world on fire. And here is an assignment for you today. Write an argumentative essay of 200 to 250 words. Your essay must have an introduction, body and conclusion. Use at least three idioms with the word world in your essay. The prompt is, some people say that the world is our oyster and that hard work and perseverance eventually result in finding the pearl. Others disagree and say that finding a pearl depends on good luck and connections. Discuss both these views and give your own opinion. And here is a checklist that you can use to make sure you have met all requirements of the assignment. When you finish writing, go through the checklist and send your writing task to a teacher. I really hope that you will receive positive feedback on your essay. And we have come to the end of the lesson and it's time to say goodbye. I wish you best luck as you begin a new chapter in your life. Don't forget, the world is your oyster. Take risks opening the oysters until you find the one with the pearl within. Good luck!